What about the ALICE experiment? What's that about, Jennifer? So ALICE is designed to look at uh, nucleus-nucleus collisions, and we have sort of a different uh, perspective on, on what we're trying to investigate uh, than ATLAS and CMS. Um, so it is still constructed from the same basic elements as what uh, Monica mentioned. So here's an image of, of ALICE. Uh, I think ours isn't quite seven stories. We're maybe closer to three, three or four stories. Um, but it, it's using 18 different technologies, uh, but around those same fundamental uh, components that were mentioned before. Uh, and we're trying to really look at the evolution of this uh, primordial soup. Uh, so rather than looking for new particles, um, what they're doing in the other experiments, our goal is to basically reconstruct the uh, phases of this matter that we're creating in this primordial soup going back to the Big Bang. And let's just talk about phases of this primordial matter. I mean, in theory, if you can create this first thousandth of a second of the Big Bang, um, in the same way that uh, you know water becomes ice as it cools, you suspect that the, the, the nature of matter changes as the energy level changes, and that might be observable in some way. That's right. In fact, we have observed it at uh, the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider at Brookhaven National Laboratory, uh, which is where I did some of my research work before moving to the Large Hadron Collider. Um, and what we, what we know from experiments there is that we, we can create this primordial soup, and it, it's very dense and uh, interacts very strongly with the quarks and gluons that, that traverse it. Um, and it's a very high temperature medium. And basically, in order to create that medium, we start with nuclei that, uh, in, in our understanding of the phases of nuclear matter, a nucleus is actually behaves much like a liquid drop. And so we're basically taking two liquid drops and colliding them at very high energies and trying to boil it, essentially, into a steam of quarks and gluons. Uh, so kind of like the phases of water that you mentioned, we're trying to basically make steam. And then watch as those particles in the steam condense back into water and freeze into the particles but, that we... But literally, in terms of the kinds of detectors and the things that you're going to be looking at, um, at one energy state, you'll see uh, a, a certain census of gluons and, and muons and particles. And then as the energy state changes, they'll disappear because they've combined and become other kinds of particles. And as the energy levels go down, the particles change because they combine or decay in certain ways. That's right. And we never actually observe the quarks and gluons by themselves. Uh, we only observe the products that come from them after they've frozen back into uh, those normal particles. And what we have to do is basically try to look at that debris and the patterns of the debris and reconstruct whether and what the phase looked like uh, at the point when it was quarks and gluons. Do we have that animation? The one that, excuse me, because I'm just a regular human, sure. the one that was like <laughs> totally awesome of the smashing. Oh, yeah, so we, 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 we have a yeah, image we just, uh, showing You know, the, the totally the awesome collision. one. We, the totally yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, I think, gives you a sort of a visualization. Marcel, okay. There we go. So uh, the, the white and the red are the protons and neutrons in the nucleus right before it collides. And um, basically, they, they look kind of flat in that image. I don't know if we can Yeah, let's do it, it again. It, for totally awesome stuff, maybe a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> they, they basically, they start off flat because they're moving so fast. They're, they're what, at what we call relativistic speeds that they've been uh, uh, kind of uh, squashed by uh, relativistic effects into these flat pancakes. Close to the speed of light. Close to the speed right. of light, that's right. And then what happens is you get uh, the liberation of all of these quarks and gluons from, in this case, the picture shows the, the protons and the neutrons in white, and all of those colored particles represent the quarks and gluons coming out of that collision. And in that um, mess of color there, there are particles that you know exist, right, Frank? Yes. And a, in the soup, maybe some characters that you'd love to meet. 